April 16, 1972. Apollo 16, man's fifth lunar landing, sat silently on the pad awaiting its mission. Inside the astronaut quarters, its relaxed crew ate Sunday breakfast. John Young, a veteran of three previous space flights, was commander. Ken Mattingly, command module pilot, would conduct orbital experiments around the moon, while Charles Duke explored the lunar surface with Young. April 22nd, Young and Duke would find themselves strapped into a small electric car called the Rover, bouncing across the lunar plateau known as Descartes. Ah, oh, the old water bag is working super. This is going to be a good day, Charlie. Yeah! Woo! Man, that's a great. Big skid. We're doing uh, 10 clicks, Tony. As Young and Duke rode the bucking rover to the lunar formation called Stone Mountain, NASA geologist Farouk El Baz wrote on a blackboard on Earth, there is nothing so far removed from us to be beyond our reach or so hidden that we cannot discover it. Rene Descartes. As John Young would later remark, Apollo 16 would certainly help prove that Rene Descartes was right. Almost like a uh, freshly plowed field that's been rained on. Yet less than two days before, it looked as though this would never happen. It was, in Young's words, a real cliffhanger. The Marshall Space Flight Center team was working on a launch vehicle gyroscope problem that threatened to scrub the mission. Less than an hour before liftoff, their advisory to the Kennedy Space Center launch team was go. had been perfect. During the three-day flight to lunar orbit, the problems encountered had been more annoyances than critical, such as paint flaking off the lunar module, and later a jammed antenna in one of the lunar module's several communication systems. All in all, it had been a quiet flight. April 19th. The burn into lunar orbit was right on. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, Fleet 16 has arrived. The subsequent maneuvers all went without a hitch. Then the next day, April 20th, Young and Duke undocked the lunar module preparatory to landing, leaving Mattingly in the command module. The next maneuver was for Mattingly to burn the main engine of his spacecraft to put it into a circular orbit. But as the lunar module emerged from behind the moon... No, sir. No. Copy, no, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. In preparing for the circularization burn, Mattingly had found apparent uncontrolled oscillations in the main engine's backup control system. Following mission rules, he did not make the burn. How long do you think it's going to take him to get around him, Jerry? I, I think your estimate of a couple of uh, three reds. Yeah. With the backup system having trouble, well, right only on the, the primary system, system was known to be usable on the engine needed to get the astronauts out of lunar orbit and back to Earth. However, the lunar module engines could be used if the two spacecraft were docked. The first step in the problem-solving technique, 
Stabilize the situation in the safest manner. Get the two spacecraft, which had separated, close enough together to dock if necessary. Let's get them back together, get the things back as they want them, get them mentally prepared to do what you're going to do. But now don't take that as an input. I'm talking out loud. I don't want to say something that's sure of. I don't see any way we can continue on. At that moment, the chances for a landing looked pretty slim. But you look at a problem step by step. Step one underway, you look at step two. Analyze the problem as completely as possible within the time frame. We should make sure that that's gone, but there's no way that no, 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 no the team was coming up to speed, not only at the manned spacecraft center, but from MIT in Massachusetts to North American in Southern California. Isolate the trouble, simulate it, evaluate it. You can't use it if you get a broken wire, you don't know it's gonna come back again. You know, like I'm drifting the other way. Not according to my needles. Okay, I'll believe your needles. Of course, then you would have had no options. Go ahead. I mean, then it's full speed ahead. I just don't much see how we can make it on this next trip. I think you guys ought to continue to work. You'd so you'd only do it if you had a failure on the primary. Well, how would you ever get the damn thing trimmed then? Well, I would. I would. If I had a failure in a primary, I'd shut it down. Look. Well, we must be going in the right direction then. Yeah, you're gonna get there. Uh, really? Yeah, but I want you guys to simulate it. Simulate it. Isolate, simulate, evaluate. The results were coming in. It was beginning to pay off. The simulator tests and other data were showing that with the engine on, the oscillations would do no harm. Despite the earlier pessimism, it was beginning to look pretty good. Okay, when you come up on uh, AOS, uh, on the next rev, rev 15, we'll give you a go or no go for another try. Man Spacecraft Center Director, Dr. Christopher C. Kraft, Jr. Just came back into the control center after having attended a meeting by management people in one of the back rooms, and the situation is go for landing. Well, have at it, Dave, so we're going to try. You do have a go for another try here at the PDI on Rev 16. Once more, they would pass behind the moon. And on the next revolution, John Young and Charlie Duke would start their swift descent to the Descartes Plateau. Okay, filter initialization looks good. Right on, lock on. Feel that beauty? Come on. 200, pro. It's over. It's over. Huh? Hey, there he is, Gators, Lone Star. Right now, it's pretty good. No. No, no, no. Okay, anywhere in the middle. Still there, still there. Looking good. Looking good. Yeah, I'm on the axe. There comes the shadow. Okay, down at three. 50 feet. Down at four. Give me one click up. Be backing up slightly. Okay, two down. Stand by for contact. Come on, let her down. You level off. Let her on down. Okay, 76%, plenty fast. Contact. Stop. Boom. Wow! Come on, man! Oh, Ron is finally here, Houston. Fantastic! The original plan had called for Young and Duke to get out and explore shortly after landing. However, the near abort had lasted six hours. The tired astronauts would sleep. April 21, Mission Commander John Young stepped onto the Descartes Formation, 11.58 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Hey, uh, mysterious and unknown Descartes, Alan Plains, Apollo 16 is going to change your image. Uh -huh. While
while their activities were monitored by mission control, Young and Duke were also observed by scientists located across the hall in the science support room. After unloading the rover from its storage bay in the lunar module, they planted the flag. Hey, John, this is perfect with the limb and the rover and you and, and the stone mountains and the old flag. Come on out here and give me a salute. Big Navy salute. Off the ground, on the floor. There we go. Bet. Young set up an ultraviolet camera to provide the first astronomical observations from the moon. He took pictures of the Earth's upper atmosphere and magnetosphere and their interaction with the solar wind. He also photographed the interstellar gas present throughout space and the ultraviolet halos that appear around galaxies. Astronomers have long wanted a telescope on the moon. Perhaps this experiment would show the moon an ideal base for future astronomical observations. You, you want two pins? Yeah, we would like two pins. John, sir. I'm not leaning on Duke it. Duke drilled a hole into which a heat flow probe was to be placed, part of one of the experiments attached to the station. As Duke drilled, Young set up the central station and the remainder of the experiments. Then, what many considered the biggest disappointment of the mission. Just some rocks down there in the regular list, Tony. You know, it looks, I bet it's just like the side of that, that fresh uh, crater we saw back near the limb. Charlie, what? Something happened here. What happened? I don't know. Here's a line that pulled loose. Uh-oh. What line is it? But that means you've got to uh, you've got to make all those wires, separate wires in there, and have them insulated from one another. That's right. And uh, if that doesn't occur, what are the chances of shorting out the central station? Well, that's another one that they're working. Uh, On Earth, they tried to figure a way to fix the heat flow. On the moon, the astronauts continued with the other experiments. Young placed a series of sensors in the soil then fired explosive charges, mapping the lunar subsurface much as geologists on Earth use explosives to search for oil. They continue to sample the area and activate the experiments. Then they returned to the rover and prepared for their first trip away from the landing site in search for geological samples. And here we go. Their first traverse would take them about one kilometer west of the landing site. They would make two stops to collect samples and conduct experiments. That's a good pick up their spot. John, you're just beautiful. That is the most beautiful sight. What's that? You're standing there on the rim of that crater. This guy don't really know. Yeah, we're going to have to use the amp. Young used a portable instrument to measure the local magnetic field. He would later record the most intense magnetic field ever found on the moon far higher than scientists ever suspected. It's really some crater. As you come around there, there's a rock in the near field on this rim that has some white on the top of it. We'd like you to pick it up with a grab sample. This one right here? That's it. This, this one right here? That's it. You got it right there. Okay, we copy that. There would be one more stop before they got back to the lunar module to close out this EVA. With Duke acting as photographer and Young as driver, they put the rover through a full test. Man, you are really bouncing. Is he on the ground at all? That's 10 kilometers. Huh? He's 
got about two wheels on the ground. Okay, turn sharp. Then it was back to their lunar base, activate experiments, and close out EVA-1. TY's exercise, is that right? Physical fitness, gym level? Hey, that's right. Please don't take pictures of the uh, hot dogs. <laughs> Showing the low residue, high protein diet. On Earth, the scientists took a break. Tomorrow would be another busy day. April 22nd. The lunar surface temperature in the sun should be around 135 degrees today. Today they were headed a little over four kilometers south to climb their rover up the side of Stone Mountain. Man, we are really going up a hill, I'll tell you. Their first station, a crater 700 feet above their lunar module. They would make a total of six stops on this traverse, collecting samples from large rocks down through the intermediate to the smallest soil particles. They would operate experiments measuring the strength of local magnetic fields to measuring the resistance of the soil to compaction. Man, we come a long way. Hey, John, it's easier to go straight across. That was fun. Well, I haven't had any trouble, okay? I have a tough time walking up there. The sampling time used up. It was time to return to the rover and head back to the lunar module. And they did it in two minutes less travel time right than they were pre-planned. Fantastic. Tony, how about an extension, you guys? We feeling good. Is that all we're going to do tonight? We're going to talk. But with the limited oxygen and water in the backpacks, it was finally time to close out EVA-2. Okay. Now I think they realize that it's not more, uh, well, a gee whiz, like my friend said, uh, thrill, but it's real exploration, and this is much more serious and uh, much more uh, important for the future of mankind than uh, just a plain exploit, a technical or technological exploit. This is exploration. Ray Bradbury claims that mankind sees in the exploration of space is his first chance at immortality since he's since he invented religion april 23rd the decision had been made not to try and fix the broken heat flow experiment because of the time and complexities involved traverse number three today young and duke would head north about five kilometers to north ray crater the largest lunar crater to be sampled by men. Outstanding. Hey, Tony, it seems to me this is a, uh, a more subdued surface over here than going towards South Ray. Oh, spectacular. Just spectacular. 
Wow. Sorry, Charlie. Beautiful. I gotta keep my eye on the drive. That's great. Yeah. Jack, that's a good point to remember. All three crews now tend to think they're there before they get there. I remember. Man, does this thing have steep walls. They said 60 degrees. Now, I tell you, I can't see to the bottom of it, and I'm as close to the edge as I'm going to get. <laughs> That's the truth. Now, the uh, routine, the if anything on the moon can be called that. Test, collect, photograph. Keep moving. Time is precious on the moon. They look like drill holes is what they look like. You do that in West Texas and you get a rattlesnake. Here you get permanently shattered soil. How about rolling that one over? No way. Then, one of the most spectacular discoveries of the mission. Look at the size of that biggie. It is a biggie, isn't it? It may be further away than we think. No, it's not very far. It was just right beyond you. And we better press on for the big boulder. Okay, we're headed that way. You get the tongs, uh, John? Yep. I'm carrying the rake. That big black dot. Fantastic. Right here. If, if we could see to the bottom, we could say for sure if this big black rock is right out of the bottom. But uh, my guess from the old photographs is it probably is. Okay, that sounds like a good guess. God, they weren't at it, so. It looks like they were standing right there. Look at the size of that rock. <laughs> Curious what they're going to look like when they stand next to it. <laughs> we can see. Once I get to it, the bigger it is. Yeah, but look at the permanent shattered part, Charlie. On this side over here? Yeah. And as our crew slowly <laughs> We bent across it, disappeared into the sunset. Well, Tony, that's your half rock right there. Very good. Don't get too near the edge of that thing, it falls off. Look look over look over at your right. It falls off pretty good. Yeah, I know. Yeah, we Keep can going. <laughs> But now it was time to head back to their base and close out the EVA. All right, we think you could just about to head south now. Yeah, the only reason. During the previous EVA, a section of a rear fender had come off the rover, causing the astronauts to receive occasional showers of lunar dirt. And that's a beautiful sight. Young parked the rover, then moved out to join Duke. Enter the lunar module and prepare for liftoff. Smile, F.A.O. Don't be mad. We'll get it up there. See how nice and leisurely it's been? That's the way it should be, getting ready for us then. Ten seconds. What a ride, what a ride. Pitch over's on time. Together in orbit, the two spacecraft pirouetted, each inspecting the other. This is one of the fastest maneuvers I've made in a long time. The inspections complete, the command module and lunar module maneuvered to docking. John Young, Ken Mattingly, and Charlie Duke, reunited aboard the command module, settled down for tomorrow's tasks jettison the lunar module and burn out of orbit to come home. April 25, Ken Mattingly left the confines of the command module cabin, 173,000 miles from Earth. As he orbited the moon, 
he had not only made visual observations, he had been operating a complex series of experiments. Many of these had returned instant data to Houston. Two had taken thousands of high-resolution pictures of the lunar terrain. Now, Mattingly retrieved the film canisters and made his way back to the cabin with them as Charlie Duke stood in the hatch to help him. It had been quite a mission. In John Young's words, I think we've seen as much in, uh, in 10 days as most people see in 10 lifetimes. April 27, the last day. The crew looked out their windows through the 5,000 degree fireball of re-entry at their native planet. Yeah, we get one more. Well, one done. more to go. 